Good morning, everybody. I'm back. <laughs> I have just spent the best three days with my daughter. She visited us from Sydney. She's off on a trip to Chile and we are babysitting her dog, which has given me hay fever, so I sound a bit nasally. But anyway, so um, um, what I'm going to do today is do a, one of these flowers. I had a request from somebody on the comment section saying, have you shown us how to do that flower? Well, yes, I did. I made this long video, which I thought was going so well. And then I got all tongue tied and whatever else. And oh, goeie genade. I had to ditch it. I don't know how to edit videos. So, you know, I've got to start all over again. But I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on this little hoop here because I want to show you what happens behind when we're working with silk ribbon. I am going to pop this little, the second flower right next to her, sort of so she looks as though she's coming out from underneath there. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we get, we always make, the, uh, well, I do anyway, I always make the center of my flower first before I put the petals on. And um, from my book, Foolproof Flower Embroidery, you don't actually have to just simply do colonial knots for every flower. There are many, many options. And in my book, I give you quite a few. So there's there's buttons, there's sequins, there's roost ribbon roses. There's all sorts of ways that you can make centers of your flowers. So experiment with that in your little sampler. So as I go along making colonial knots, be, uh, remember to treat her mean. So pull through, do your colonial knot. And at this point, give a firm tug so that the knot settles on the surface of your work. I must be very honest here when I, oh, you know what, I, I really was not into these YouTube videos. I, I didn't really, wasn't interested in doing them or anything else. I'm so fortunate that my teaching schedule is very busy and I, you know, spend a lot of time with people and I see them, I look at their faces, we talk and laugh and, you know, so teaching in real life oh, is such a joy and a privilege for me. And I had no idea that this, this whole community of very lovely people on community, you know, on YouTube exist, especially people like Rachel and Sarah from Roxy's Creative Journal. One of my followers on social media a while back sent me a link to the YouTube and she was talking about my book and I thought, oh my hat, these people are so friendly and, you know, generous on YouTube. And then, lo and behold, a few months later, somebody sent me another link to Corrine's To Be Loved Tre Treasures channel. And I went, oh my God. I, I eventually got to meet Corrine, so that was pretty fun. And then another uh, lovely lady was very generous with her time, Susan Taylor Brown from the States. She took the time to Zoom call me and to talk and encourage me and talk me through a few little tips. She was she was very, very helpful to me. Uh, there's a few things that I can really improve on, but in time, in time, in time. All right, so there we go. I'm not going to stress too much that this is a perfect circle because, um, how am I gonna treat perfection? Look, I'm gonna be honest and maybe offend a few people. I think perfection is totally overrated. It doesn't, our work does not have to be perfect none of our well my work definitely is not going to be hanging in the smithsonian museum let's end this off before i start ranting there's a little loop i go through that loop and then i go through that loop again and i pull up to the ceiling and there is my knot back back to perfection i think it's overrated i don't think we have to be perfectionists or our work doesn't have to be perfect i also find that when we strive for perfection it makes us tense and anxious especially when I teach people who really want their work to be perfect and they're entitled to that but I find it it's hard on them you know and I just want to say just relax and breathe all right we're going to now make a ribbon stitch I am going to be using a seven millimeter silk ribbon I am also going to encourage you to press your ribbon no matter how flat or smooth you think it is these come in very handy they're just little hair straighteners uh, this one's about 12 years old and you just run your silk ribbon through that silk is a natural fiber so it has a memory 
So even the tiniest of little crease in your silk ribbon, as you pull it through, it's going to crease on that same place over and over again. And well, it's going to make, but it makes me unhappy. It might not make you all that unhappy. All right. So there we go. I'm going to actually open her up, gently splay her bottom. So the bottom slightly opens. And then I'm going to lay my ribbon down in the middle of of that ribbon you see there's a little bit of loft happening i haven't pulled this enormously tight or i haven't lifted it quite high there's just a little softness in it i'm going to go through and at this point get your needle through to start off with then turn your work over and gently with i call spider fingers pull do not pull from here from your needle you're going to have no control over it simply pull her through gently bonk slowly slowly bomb along bomb 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 until you get a beautiful little point on it you don't want her looking like that necessarily all square just give her a few more points pulls and then it gets this beautiful little petal shape there so what i do is i just don't go from there just do another one around and around and around i just find that my petals kind of tilt a little bit so i make a little wedge so i will do another one over here and then i will fill these in and then I will do another petal there and fill that in like that. However, there's a few things you need to be very mindful with silk ribbon. I don't want to alarm you, but anyway, they are. So pull her through, splay her bottom, gently stroke her until she's, you know, relaxed. Insert her, that needle, get it through. And then on the back, spider fingers until you get that beautiful point now you're going to come back here and fill these in but please this is a big but i want you to be very aware of where this ribbon is on the back of your work you have to check all the time because if i went through that ribbon there to make the next ribbon stitch you would pull all these stitches through you'd be so unhappy and miserable so Push her aside and then do your next one there. So come up, splay your bottom back in there and pull through. Get her through, spider fingers until you get that beautiful pointed petal. If you do, if you have a little bit of a whoops. So if I come over here, for example, and I pull her through, all good. Everything's going according to plan. She's looking very glamorous and gorgeous. However, I get vicious and I yank her through. Uh-oh, don't stress. Do not un try and unpick that ribbon at all. You've gone through her, so you actually can't use that ribbon again. Simply go over her again. So come up. Display her bottom, get her nice and broad at her bottom, and go through. I'm just not going to go through that ribbon again because you'll be very unhappy. And there you have it. So there you go. Now, when you're doing something like this, you can see that mine sort of overlap, and I've really gone crazy there. So you've got to be very, very, very careful that when you bring that ribbon through from the back that you are not going through any of that ribbon behind there you will be so so unhappy honestly all right so that's how i did it if i come back to this one here i'm going to start my first petal in the middle sorry this is going to be very difficult to pull through sometimes she's twisting isn't she so just get her splayed you the boss of her so you just tell her what you want her to do. Don't let her dominate. Back through there. Give her a yank through. Spider fingers behind. She's folding in on me. She's fine. I've got a little bit of ribbon on thread happening behind here that's causing me drama. And then I will come over to this side. Get her through. Give her a little bit of a yank. Lay her and go through. Ah, 
I can feel where there is ribbon, so I'm going to not worry too much. I'm quite good about it. I've been doing it for quite a few years. I'm not really concerned also if these petals overlap and touch and whatever, you know, in nature, that's what happens. So let's see if that's true, what I said. Remember what I said? I know I had to go through silk ribbon. Let's see if that is true. <laughs> I'm correct. And there you have it. That's called a ribbon stitch. What do you think? Give it a go. Spider fingers behind, please. There you go. Can you hear the birds this morning? The kookaburras were making a huge noise beforehand. My last one, let's hope that this one works because I can feel there's all sorts of nonsense going behind there. I've got silk ribbon. Oh, yes. There you go. Look what happened, peeps. I went pull through. I got all carried away and full of myself. So simply go all over that again. So come up. You waste a bit of ribbon this way, but sometimes those little mistakes that we make really add character to our work anyway. I don't know what's going to happen to this one. There you go. You can't even see that I had this huge altercation with my ribbon. There you go. I do have a little bit of ribbon left over on the back, so I might just get, you know, it's, it's too little to... You make a whole nother flower, but I can simply make a little bud here. There you go. And I will leave it there for today because I will show you in the next lesson how to connect this to that with a little bit of vine going on. So there's another little snippets for today. Thank you very much for your time and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.